Hello, and welcome to the Art of Photography lesson number two. My name is Kelly Corsi Gray, and in conjunction with the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art from Ligonier, Pennsylvania, we're here to help you take better pictures. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Kelly. I am your instructor, and I just figured out how to make myself appear in the bottom right hand side of your screen. So I wanted to assure you there is a human behind the voice that you're listening to on this uh, particular video and introduce myself. So I have been a teacher for a very long time, done most of my teaching in front of really um, uh, some small groups and some really large groups of people and I'm looking forward to interacting with everyone in the online world. So um, again, my name is Kelly and welcome to the Art of Photography. I hope you have as much fun as I do taking pictures. So if you remember from our first photography lesson, when you take a photograph, you're actually taking a picture of light falling on a subject. And so this is just a little reminder of that because that is one of those things that needs to creep into the back of your mind and be present every single time you take a photograph. I also showed you last week this triangle because light on the moment or subject within a composition is the triangle that makes up every photograph. Now here is a, uh, a lovely pastoral scene from my hometown and I just wanted to show you how different it looks in different light. I was driving by one day and this is a, a really pretty barn. They redid the cupolas here and so I took a photograph then about a week later or so there was a foggy day so this is essentially the same subject matter but in vastly different light and it evokes a different mood i like to put the two of them together so that you can see that it is the same exact barn in one picture i have of the fence in the other picture i i shot over the fence but the, uh, the feeling that you get from each photograph is different and the barn itself looks a bit different because there is different light. So there's different moods being evoked. There's a concept I want to introduce to you today called color temperature. And color temperature is something that you can just once you understand a little bit about it, you can put it into the back of your mind for the most part, but it's something that I want you to start to consider in your photographs because as we know, light is the most important thing and sometimes light has a tint of color to it, especially at different times of the day. Now I've told you that photography is all about the light. But I want to introduce you to a very famous painter from the 19th century, a fellow by the name of Claude Monet. Claude Monet became known as an impressionist painter. And here are four images that he created of the Rouen Cathedral, a cathedral in the northern part of France in the city of Rouen. Now, this is the same image. It's the same composition it's the same cathedral. The only thing that's changing dramatically is the light, the light falling on the cathedral. And so I wanted to show you that not only do photographers take light into consideration, but at different times, different types of artists have taken light and the temperature of that light into consideration in their art. If you've ever snapped a photograph indoors without a flash, you've probably gotten a warm type of image, something akin to the one on the left. I've actually color balanced the image on the right. It's the same exact image, but the light has been altered to reflect more of what I saw with my eyes. 
Now in your cameras, if you're using a camera, not a cell phone, if you're using a DSLR, mirrorless camera, point and shoot camera sometimes as well, all of these cameras, sometimes you'll see little abbreviations, you don't know what they are. If you've ever seen the abbreviation WB, it stands for white balance. And you can choose, if you're going to take a bunch of pictures in an indoor space, an indoor white balance and it will help you to achieve the correct color. It won't all come out super warm. So I'm about to show you a whole series of images of the cathedral, the Duomo in Milan, Italy. And uh, right here you can see the beautiful facade of the Duomo. It's a Gothic cathedral and uh, very, very ornate, but I want you to look at the differences as I took pictures during several visits at different times of the day. So note the color temperature changes. So here's one, uh, looks like it's pretty early in the day. This, perhaps in the afternoon, it's uh, a bit of a warm glow and it's definitely casting a huge shadow on the one side of the cathedral. Here we're starting to get into a cooler light. So there's still a blue sky, but we're starting to get into um, a cooler set of color temperature. Now we've reached what a lot of people will call the blue hour here and this is even more blue. And finally, this is full on night and this is illuminated by um, electric lights. So the color temperature has changed throughout the day. So perhaps the sun direct at noon, 5,000 to 5,400 Kelvin, daylight, sun and sky, a little bit higher, overcast, there's uh, it's 6,000 to 75,000 Kelvin. Now you don't have to worry about the numbers at all. I just want you to note, because it can make a big difference in your photographs, how the light can change your image. And I wanna talk about different times of day that are really great for different subjects. And uh, that's a topic we will take up shortly. So when it comes to light, Think about these things. What direction is the light coming from? Is it throwing a lot of shadows? Is it backlighting something? Are you shooting directly into the sun? Is the quality of light, is it harsh? Is it soft? Is it magical? Photographers, we love something called magic light. And I'll show you some photos that uh, I consider to have some magic light in them. But essentially, you're looking for that beautiful warm glow you get very often at sunrise and sunset. That's often what we call magical light, but it's not the only time it's magical. And I want you to think about the color temperature of the light. So if you've taken any photos inside, you might be a little confused as to why your images have kind of a strange color cast. So I want you to think about that as you start to take pictures. Now, I wanted to show you uh, a couple other examples of light and how it changes the mood, how it really animates some subjects. I was walking last fall through and I was looking for beautiful trees with lots of color and I came across this plant with lots of, um, I don't know, they look like little snowballs. Of course, they're seeds that fly in the air. Um, but I took a picture and there was a little bit of light. You can see it's kind of on the, the left third line from uh, our last talk about the rule of thirds. But here, I got in closer to my subject and you can see that the light is really, it's activating a couple of those, you know, plant snowballs as I will call them. And so the light really changes the look of what's happening. Now here, 
this image, um, it's not a lot of focus, but I wanted to show you how dramatic the light can look if it's directly behind a subject. And here, this is a pure silhouette. So of all three images, I think I like this one best as far as kind of a moment, something that really reminds me of that particular day. I do like a lot of drama in photographs and um, it's, uh, there's some focus over on the, the far right side. It's, it's probably not something I'd hang on my wall, but it has some drama and I like the atmosphere that was created by the light. Now, here are a few pictures of me and I really wanted these pictures to come out well because for the very first time in my life, I'm holding a sloth. Uh, the sloth in the shadows there, his name is Elvis. And I had handed my camera to someone else and they took the pictures of me. And other than a memory, I don't consider these particularly successful because the shadows are so powerful. And you can hardly see Elvis's face and, and my face is half shadow. It's very, very harsh. And so um, the person behind the camera, they did what I asked. They took my picture with the cute, adorable sloth named Elvis, but it's not something that I really want to hang on my wall because we're both in shadow. Now here, the person that was taking my picture, they also took my friend's picture. This is my friend, JC, and he too is holding Elvis. Now I put the picture on the left in this program because I wanted you to see that because of the deep, deep shadows, the camera has to take a longer exposure and this picture is blurry. And you might say, why didn't we use a flash? Well, when you take pictures of animals, you tend not to use flash because it's very disconcerting for them. They don't understand it and it's, it's really too harsh uh, for them to deal with. It's a very artificial thing and uh, can be quite harmful for the animals. And if you use a flash out in the wild, after you take that one shot, most animals are gone. They do not like flash. Now on the right, the picture on the right, JC is still primarily in shadow. This picture did come out, but again, his face and Elvis's face completely in shadow. Now, this is another one of my friends, and I took the picture on the left, and I thought we were in good shape as far as shadows, but we really weren't. So this, uh, this poor woman has a shadow going right down through her eye, across Elvis's arm, across her arm and elbow. And so what I did is I moved my feet. I may have asked her to take one step, I probably moved my feet and I shifted the perspective so that on the right, even though the sun is very, very harsh, you can see her face and you can finally see Elvis's face as well. So in certain circumstances, you just have to play it by ear. You have to get the best picture you can as you can get it. And so Always be ready, willing, and able to move your feet or scrunch down and get low or, or move your arms, whatever. Be ready to find the shot that's beneficial for everyone. Now, I don't want these lessons to be too long. I want to focus on just a couple things, but I want to show you my thought process in taking a particular image and how I got that particular image. I was lucky enough to live in Strasbourg, France for three months with some students. I was teaching art history and we got to live in a beautiful chalet in a phenomenal town called Strasbourg. It is in the Alsace and that is right on the border of France and Germany on the uh, far east side of France. We went on a river cruise that day. And so as we went, we were in a very um, low uh, boat, 
uh, boat low to the water. And I saw this beautiful church. I had passed it before. And so I took its picture. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. There weren't any harsh shadows on it. So I got a couple of pictures of the, the church. But I wanted to keep trying things. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show is that we were actually on a boat. I wanted to illustrate the mode of, of transport, per se. Um, so if you look on the right, you can see that I looked down. I saw the reflection of the cathedral in the glass roof of the boat. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So I took its picture there. And the picture on the left, I just wanted to show you what the top of the boat looked like and how we passed under those low bridges. So we were coming up on another bridge and the church looks beautiful, but um, there are people walking along. I, I thought about this and I said to myself, you know, I probably could have taken this photo um, on another bridge or if I was standing on the shoreline. And so I was still grasping, trying to find a unique shot on the boat of this church. I tried a couple different angles. I tried um, right before we went under the bridge. I got a side view after we went under the bridge. We turned around and we came back through. And as we were going under the bridge, I pulled the camera up and took a shot. And what ended up happening is I ended up framing the cathedral with the arch of the bridge. And this is one of my favorite pictures from Strasbourg. It was taken on one of the very first days I was there. And it was kind of one of those magical moments in photography where I, I knew it was digital. I decided, hey, you know, it doesn't hurt anything. I'll try this. And I pulled the camera up right at the right moment. And now when I downloaded the image, I also thought, you know, this might be a beautiful image in black and white. And I thought it's high contrast. And another good aspect here is there are clouds in the sky. So the clouds make the sky quite interesting in this picture. And uh, some people prefer black and white. Some people prefer color. In this instance, in this instance, I'm not sure which I prefer. I do love the blue of the sky, but the black and white is also really fun. I recommend shooting everything in color because if you would like to change your image to black and white, you can do that on your phone. You can do that easily within an editing application. You can also do that easily on the computer these days. So my recommendation is shoot in color, change it to black and white later, and uh, you tend to have a lot of really nice controls when you do that. Now, I want to talk about one last big concept when it comes to photography. I want you to think about shooting a lot of pictures and being experimental when you shoot. I was right in front of the cathedral and I believe this is uh, the cathedral in Florence, Italy, the Duomo. And I like to photograph cathedrals. They're one of my favorite subjects. And I, I go everywhere I possibly can and I try every angle. Because a lot of times I'm in this city for just a brief period of time. I only have an hour, two or three to visit a cathedral. They're beautiful, complex works of art and architecture. And so here I went right to the door and I looked straight up. And I want you to start thinking about different angles to take pictures from. Here's another cathedral. This is the Strasbourg Cathedral in Strasbourg, France. And again, I looked straight up, but this time I decided to go with a little bit of a skew. And so it's a bit off center, off kilter. Um, ultimately, not my favorite photograph, but it's worth a try. This is the cathedral from straight on, but here I photographed it and I made sure that I utilized 
the edges of some other buildings to give this kind of a form so that this is a horizontal photo. It shows the breadth of the front facade, but it also shows you some of the other architecture that's right next to this cathedral. Now on the left, I've taken an image of that cathedral and just gotten the front facade and the blue sky. And then I looked in the other direction. I turned around and put my back to the cathedral. And as I looked at the traditional architecture with uh, the wooden framing and the beautiful painting, I saw the reflection of the Madonna from the front facade of this cathedral in the window panes. And I thought, oh, what an interesting juxtaposition of the old cathedral. It very took a very, very long time to build and this traditional uh, piece of architecture. And I'm a bit of a specialist in reflections. I did a whole show on reflections. And so I thought, oh, this is really, really fun. So I moved around until I got the Virgin Mary here on the uh, left window on the right picture um, lined up so that you could see that it was the, the Virgin Mother with the baby Jesus from the cathedral. And I like also that the cathedral is very colorful and essentially the background architecture is almost black and white. Now, when the next time you go into a place and you see a beautiful chandelier, maybe go directly under it and take its picture. I want you to start looking in different ways at different objects. Look directly up. Look at chandeliers. See how the staircases that they come through in this instance. This is the Biltmore uh, Estate in North Carolina. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this uh, chandelier is magnificent, but I really liked the curved lines of the stairway. And I got several different images by looking in different directions. Now, these are images from a cathedral in Italy. And I was looking up at the dome and I took a little bit of a different angle so that it wouldn't be the plane boring straight up into the dome. And then the, the image on the left, I really, I really liked. They had all these beautiful long lamp fixtures. I think there were some incense burners as well. And I, I lined them up diagonally to draw your eye into this composition, but I made sure to get lots of rounded edges as well. And I thought a lot about it and made sure that the uh, eagle um, is, is also at the very top of the image, but it's still within the frame. So I want you to start looking at things a little differently. Look directly up. Now, this is the famous Macernus Dome from the Alhambra in Spain. And I used to teach art history uh, every day of my life and I was so excited to finally visit this particular place and to see the dome that I had only seen in books and so I looked directly up I took a lot of different pictures and I was just so thrilled to finally see in person what I had only seen in my textbooks before Cathedrals, you can tell I really enjoy cathedrals are very big and complex and this is a beautiful uh, cathedral and here you can see the vaulting and I think this is a really nice way to capture the immensity of these structures. All right, I think I've convinced you to look up and that is what we call a worm's eye view looking from the ground up. You can also, of course, have a bird's eye view. So if you were to climb the tower in this picture, you could look down on things and get a, a bird's eye view. But here, I wanted to show you that when I go to a new place and I'm photographing architecture, I take a lot of pictures and I like to get pictures from a distance, like the one on the left. I like to come in 
and get about a, a middle ground shot, some of the details, try to get some nice interesting compositions. And then on the far right, I've gone in and gotten some just very specific details. So these are all of the same cathedral in Siena, Italy. And I have tried to get as many different angles as I can at one time. So I will do the long shot, the middle shot, and the close-up shot. This is harder to do with your phone because your phone only zooms so far. Now there are some incredible cell phones these days that have cameras that zoom out with an optical zoom. Um, but if you zoom too far and it's a digital zoom, all you're going to do is uh, frustrate yourself. So these were taken with a regular camera. And what I have is a lens that I like for cities. Um, they now make lenses for cameras that are really, really fantastic for um, if you're walking through a city or you think you might run into some wildlife, but you're not sure. Cameras, um, very often you can buy a lens that goes from like 28 millimeters to 300 millimeters. And that is uh, a multiplication factor of probably 10 to 15 times uh, for those of you who have zoom, zoom lenses. Now here is another cathedral, I know you're shocked. Uh, and here I wanted to show you that I walked around and I got a long shot, but I really like this sculpture. I thought, oh, this is a really interesting gargoyle. I got a bit closer to the gargoyle and, and shifted a little bit, and then I got even closer to the gargoyle, and I kept taking pictures to try all sorts of different angles because when you're in a place for the first time or you have a limited amount of time to take pictures, if you can't take your time and go slow or if you're not sure you'll be there again, it's best to take a lot of pictures. And then you can choose which ones you like the best. So I moved around, I tried all sorts of different angles, and ultimately the one I really liked the best was the one on the right. Now, the one on the right has a lot of leading lines. Our figure is off in the left-hand third of the image. It's a vertical frame, um, but you can see lots of interesting details. The one on the right, the, uh, the, the figure, the gargoyle, he's kind of in the center, and it's not very dramatic. Um, I like the one on the right personally. Now here is a bird's eye perspective from the top of the Duomo in Florence. And this time I was up on the top of the dome. You had to walk up all these stairs, but they had little windows. And I peeked out the window and I saw the shadow of the Duomo on the red buildings below. And I thought, you know what? That's a really unique picture with the um, the leading line down and the shadow, it gives you a unique perspective of being on the top of the cathedral. And this is the Duomo. So if you look at the top right hand portion, that is the cupola um, where you couldn't stand in the cupola, but there were little windows as you made your way up to the top. And so I thought, aha, everyone has a picture like this of the Duomo but not everyone has a picture of the shadow of the I also really like to frame things. So I will always look for an opportunity to put something within something else, or I like to look for, for things that make a column or a row, um, something that really draws our eyes in. So it focuses us on the way you are looking at the scene. So here we've got a bird's eye view on the left. I was climbing up one of the towers in a cathedral looking downward. And then on the right is just an interesting angle. I, I took my camera, I tilted my camera, and I imitated the uh, diagonal line that you see these little gargoyle grotesque figures on. 
I love to frame things within other buildings. So if I see an arch near a church or there's something out in front, I will always try to build a frame for what I really want to showcase. And I think it adds some drama. Here is the Hassantu Mosque in Casablanca, Morocco. I got to walk all around the mosque and I was actually lucky enough to go on a tour in the mosque which is a real treat for visitors because a lot of religious buildings around the world are not open for um, tours and tourist type visits which allow for photographs but they did allow it here and I was absolutely thrilled. Now you'll notice on the left I took a picture there's a big pole uh, with the speakers and I mean, it's a pretty image. There's a leading line. You've got some people for scale. But if you want to get more artistic, as I said, use one thing to frame something else. As I said, I'm always looking for one element to frame or really tell the story of the structure that I'm photographing that day. And here, I went in, I was behind an arch, and because of the way the light was, I essentially got kind of this incredible silhouette of an arch framing the Hassan II Mosque. I was very pleased with this shot, and I thought the light was quite beautiful as well. And finally, this these are two images, and they're almost uh, from the same place, the same cathedral, different hallway. This is Westminster Abbey. And in one instance, I photographed the window, but I utilized the bars of the window to show kind of the essence of this cathedral and the old style and kind of the old fashionedness. I, I really like that image. I've also turned the one on the left into a black and white, and it looks pretty spectacular in my opinion. Now on the right, I also wanted to get a shot where there was nothing obstructing the window and you just framed the beautiful Westminster Abbey um, through kind of the courtyard and got a beautiful shot. So I've told you a lot today. We went over a couple things and I want you to get out there and take some pictures. Now, a lot of what I've shown you this week are architectural things, but um, even if you're stuck at home a lot, you can do this with any subject matter. I want you to take photographs from a high angle or a bird's eye view. I want you to take some photographs from a really low angle or the worm's eye view. And I want you to tilt your camera or your phone into a strange angle, something that you wouldn't necessarily have used before. And I want you to try some experimental shots and see what you might like. I want you to think about the light when you're taking all of these shots. And if you can get out during the magic hours of dawn and dusk, that's a great time. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that in one of the upcoming lessons. Now you can post your favorite images to the SAML webpage when they post this video with a link and I will take a look and give you some comments and I hope that this assignment will inspire you to get out there and take tons of photographs. Don't be afraid. Take as many as you want. You're not hurting anyone. It doesn't cost anything. Digital photography is our friend. Well, thanks for watching The Art of Photography number two. Coming up soon, The Art of Photography number three. If you enjoyed these episodes, please click like and subscribe on YouTube, and that way you won't miss out on any of the next adventures. So get out there, take lots of photographs, and I will see you soon.